what's happening, beautiful people? Trumpeter Bobby Spellman here. And as you may be aware, trumpet can be a very physically demanding and very intense instrument to play at times. But today I wanted to talk about the importance of staying relaxed on this episode of... Trumpet with Bob! I suspect at one time or another, just about every trumpet player has found him or herself in a similar situation that I have in times past. And it goes like this. You're playing some music and you know that some high notes are coming up and you know it's your responsibility to play those high notes when they come up in the music and as they come like a freight train towards you, you feel that tension building up in your body and you start to sweat and you realize that you're going to have to play these notes and they're going to have to come out the way you want them. So as that time approaches, you do what we all do, which is to squeeze every muscle in your body and tense up as much as you can, jam the horn against your face and send up a prayer. And what happens? You whiff it. Happens every time. There's an element to playing the trumpet, which is even despite all the physical requirements to play, you need to be able to stay relaxed. And that was a big revelation in my trumpet playing career to realize the importance of staying relaxed especially when playing in the upper register of the trumpet. Now, it's important regardless of what range you're playing in, but I think it often comes into play when playing in the upper register because when playing in the lower register, it's easy to remember to stay relaxed. We already are relaxed. We feel relaxed playing in that low register. But when those high notes come up, we know the physical demands of playing those higher notes. And as a result, we get in our own heads, we tense up, and what happens? We cut off the air and our, the vibration in our lips and uh, give ourselves a much harder time than we need to. Now, in order to illustrate the value of staying relaxed while playing the trumpet, I'd like to do a little comparison with uh, our friends in the saxophone world. So, the saxophone operates with the vibration of a reed. Now, this is a saxophone reed. You'll notice a couple things. Number one, it's made out of reed, it's made out of wood, and it's almost paper thin. Now imagine how fast this reed has to vibrate in order to get a tone on the saxophone. And you were dealing with a paper thin reed, air blown over this thing, and this thing still has to move pretty fast. Now as trumpet players, we also have a reed mechanism, but we call them lips, and they are made out of human meat. All right, now imagine how difficult it would be to strap this ham to a saxophone mouthpiece, blow into it and get a good tone on the saxophone. How fast does this ham need to vibrate in order to get a good sound? Well, this is the kind of situation that we find ourselves every day in every day as trumpet players. Not exactly, not exactly the same, but there's certainly a challenge in getting our, our fleshy meat reeds to be able to vibrate at the speed we need them to in order to produce those notes in the upper register on the trumpet. In order to ensure that our lips are able to vibrate at the speed we need them to, it's important to make sure that our lips are staying relaxed so that they can reach those speeds that allow us to get those higher notes. Now, that's a little bit easier said than done, so I want to talk about a couple of tips that you can use to make sure that you're staying relaxed while playing the trumpet in any register. The first point that I always start with, and something that really helps me out, is to make sure when you start off in the morning that you're getting a good warm-up. Uh, whenever you start playing the trumpet, make sure that you really take the time to warm up and that will start off your day with a more of a relaxed approach and will keep your lips loose and will eliminate any tension that was built up from playing the day before. So that's the first one. You can check out my video on uh, warming up and uh, trumpet routines. I'll put that in the description below. But uh, a good warm up is a big help in starting off the day right, trying to keep your lips relaxed. The second thing that I always try to do in order to ensure that I am staying relaxed is playing in the lower register. Now, I often heard when I was a kid that if you can't play low, you can't play high. And I don't think I fully understood what my teachers were talking about back then. But the principle goes like this, is if you're unable to stay relaxed enough to play in the low register, it's going to be much more difficult to allow your lips to stay relaxed enough to move at higher speeds in the upper register. So there are a couple exercises that you can do to make sure that you're staying relaxed and you're able to play in those low registers. One is simply long tones in the low register. So I might play a low C, low G, low F sharp, work my way down to the lower notes. If you're not comfortable playing down on a low F sharp or a low G, start on a C, work your way down.
Other exercises that may be very helpful for this are other exercises that operate in that lower register, such as the Clark exercises, the first two uh, parts of the Clark book, the first two exercises in the Clark book in the lower register. So for example, you can do Clark number two down on low G. Another very useful exercise for playing in that low register and make sure that you're maintaining a certain degree of relaxation in your lips is pedal tones. Just being able to play down below, way below the staff and practice your pedal tones. Now that's a subject for another video, but if you're practicing your pedal tones, you may find that that helps a lot in really loosening up the middle of your face and allowing yourself to be able to vibrate freely in order to be able to play those higher notes as well as the lower notes. Now, a, my third tip for maintaining a certain degree of relaxation, even while playing very intense things on the trumpet, is to be sure that you're putting the weight of playing on certain parts of your body that are not this fleshy meat read over here on your face. So, a couple of things that I like to think about a lot are, first of all, especially if I'm gonna be playing higher notes, I want to engage my core. I want to think about really putting the energy on my abdominal muscles and my external obliques, which will be pushing that air out of my lungs. I want to make sure that the air speed is here and my compression is all where it needs to be in order to be able to get those high notes to come out without having to do some kind of wild stuff like jam the horn into my face or really tighten up to try to knock those notes out. If the tension can be out of my face and I can try to stay relaxed in my body but really put the effort of those notes in my abdominal muscles and in my core as well as really try to just get my muscles in my face, my orbicularis oris muscles, my cheek muscles in here, Everything here needs to be engaged. I want to make sure that I'm holding on and that everything here is in its right place, that I'm using these muscles to keep that airstream as quick and as laser-like as possible so that I don't have to do any extra work jamming my face together or pushing this horn against my face. So if I can maintain relaxation here, but make sure that I'm engaging my core, that's going to make it much easier for me to be able to travel into those upper register notes without having to overexert or jam the horn against my face or tighten my lips up. All right, so let me do, let's go back to uh, my earlier example where you, as music is coming up, you gotta play those high notes. Here you go, you're gonna jam the horn against your face. <laughs> Whiffed it again. But if I can try to stay relaxed, engage my core, and really try to use my air efficiently, Let's see how that goes. Now the middle of my lips feel very relaxed. All of this is, I'm not tensing up. I'm not trying to work too hard. I'm letting the air out of my lips and I'm letting my lips vibrate as quickly as they need to in order to create that high note. But once again, as I'm going, I'm really engaging my core and I'm trying to make sure that I'm really controlling the air pressure and the air speed coming from my lungs such that the center of my lips, all they have to do is flap around in the breeze. Now the last tip that I have uh, in regards to staying relaxed while playing is a little bit trickier to explain, but I think it's just as important as any of the other ones. And that is purely psychological. It's just a matter of really trying to train your brain not to freak out when those high notes start to uh, come at you on the page. Uh, so that means a couple of different things. Number one, if you're going to play high notes, if you're just improvising and you're, this is an exciting climax to your solo and you're ready to just, you know, knock some of those crazy notes out, you don't want to get into a point where you're tensing up and you're worried about it. You want to try to stay relaxed. I think very often we have an experience where in those moments where we're not even trying, things come out that we didn't expect to be able to play. And other times when we're really working hard, those notes are harder to get out. So in order to try to uh, embrace the that moment where everything is relaxed and you're able to play, it's just a matter really of just trying to calm yourself down, stay relaxed, just you know, trust in yourself, trust in the process of playing in order to get those notes to come out. Try not to tense up too much. Try not to stress out about it. Easier said than done. That's a little bit of a tricky move and I think each person is gonna have their own approach to trying to uh, overcome their psychological hangups in order to stay 
mentally and uh, sort of uh, spiritually relaxed while you're playing this instrument that can often be uh, very intense and very physically demanding. So that's what I got for you for today, gang, and I hope that helps in your quest for trumpety excellence and high notes and being able to traverse the entire range of the instrument without too much difficulty. The goal here is once again just to stay relaxed in order to allow your meat reeds to be able to vibrate at maximum speed in order to get those notes that you're looking for without, uh, you know, blowing a gasket. All right, gang, if you liked that video, give us a like and subscribe to the channel for some more trumpet videos and musical videos of all kinds. Uh, have a great time practicing, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya! All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it helped in your understanding of the musical world and in your pursuit of the majesty of musical self-expression. If you like this video, you can let us know by giving it a like, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more musical education videos going forward. You can also follow me on Instagram, at Bob Spellman, for some more musical fun. The Ridgewood School of Music is now accepting new students online, as well as in person in the Brooklyn, Queens, and greater New York City area. You can find us on our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com or you can send us an email at ridgewoodschoolofmusic at gmail.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can, try to set you up with a great teacher for the kinds of music that you're looking to study. All right, gang, well, thanks again, and until next time, happy practicing.